Okay, so we were talking about hands up question. So hands up question strategy has two benefits. One benefit is that you would make people think and the other benefit is that you would make them physically involve you you would make them involve in that question physically right because when they want to think they would be raising their hands and they would be you know voting for it now for example and the question can be very simple one you don't need to think very hard on that what you can do is whatever topic you're presenting on you can ask that how many of you have an idea on that but of course when we talk about being substantial presentation your introduction 60 second introduction has to be very very impactful you cannot take your 60 second introduction that is the first 60 second introduction very lightly so what you can do is you can talk very creatively or you can frame your question creatively the hand up question for example if i give you if i'm training you on this presentation skills and what i can do is I'll give you my strategy. What I used to do with my class when I used to have face-to-face uh, -face presentations, I used to ask them, how many of you hate giving presentations? And of course, there used to be a lot of hands rising up. Then I used to ask, okay, how many of you would like to give presentation after taking this workshop? I could see some 10, 20 students raising their hands and that too very undoubtedly. They were not sure whether they'll be able to do it or not, but just to, you know, console me that yes ma'am we would be learning something from it so might be we'll be giving 10 20 hands and the third question when i used to pose this question that okay how many of you are willing to give presentation if i'll give you a plus if i give you a plus unconditionally and everybody would use to raise their hands for that that yes you know every one of us would love to give presentation if you would give a plus unconditionally so what you can do is, again, you can frame your questions creatively. Your questions does not have to be very boring or very mundane or very dry because some of the answers are very obvious. So please don't make your questions very obvious until and unless. Question strategy, but make sure your questions are a little bit creative or something that would that you know that would think everybody or make everybody think that fine i would like to answer for that is my voice audible everybody hasan yes ma'am okay fine so let's move on to the third strategy the first strategy is storytelling technique the second strategy is question posing technique you can pose a very simple question or you can pose a thought provoking question or a hand up question, but please mind it, it should have some substance in it. Okay, the third strategy is introducing something shocking and it can be in the form of an image, it can, it can be in the form of a fact, it can be in the form of a stats, right? For example, if you talk about medical errors in Pakistan, we can start our presentation with in Pakistan, medical errors are the third leading cause of death behind heart disease and cancer and 400,000 deaths were recorded this year. Now, there's something startling, something really surprising for a person who is not into medical business, right? Because, you know, we do not have to give a presentation every time to technical people. Sometimes you have to deal with non-technical people too. And for that, I believe I told you that when you are delivering your presentations to non-technical people, you have to design a different frame of work. You have to make your presentation or introduction more simpler. Uh, I'll do another session on it, how to you know, uh, design your presentation for technical and non-technical people. Uh, let's just you know, stick to the introduction right now. OK, whatever statistic, whatever fact you talk about, make sure it has a direct relationship with the topic of your presentation. Right. Of course, this is something very, very logical. But why did I have to incorporate it? Because sometimes just in love for the facts, what presenters do, they start coming up with very interesting facts, but they have nothing to do with the topic. They have nothing to do with the body of the presentation. So please do not be misguided. Do not be distracted. Make sure whatever introduction you're devising for a fact, it should have to do something with the topic. Right. Then you can start your presentation or you can, uh, you know, 60 second introduction can be starting off with a powerful image. Now, again, 
this choice or choosing appropriate images is, a, is an art again. It's a science again. It's an art again. Why would I call it an art and science? Because it's a skill again that has to be mastered. Most of the people think it's very easy to choose a particular picture and that's it. Cut, crop, image. Image is there and you show it to the audience and lo and behold, that's it. That was your function. No, I'm sorry. When you are choosing an image, make sure that that image has to do everything with your topic. Again, why am I saying that? Images have two kinds of functions. Positive function, negative functions. Hopeful function, painful function. Now, why am I saying that? If you're talking about an issue which is very serious, which is very grim, which is very, you might say, it is something that has to do with, with your emotions and feelings, and it is a very serious topic. You're going to go for a serious image. You're going to go for, a, for example, I'll give you an example on that. If you're talking about uh, devastation caused by earthquake, hmm? that's a very normal topic, by the way, people talk, people give presentations upon. And if you're going, I'll give you three pictures. I'll give you an example of three pictures. What will be the most appropriate picture if you're talking about devastation caused by earthquake? Are you going to showcase a building that has collapsed because of earthquake? Are you going to show a bunch of people saving other people under the wreckage of that building? Or are you going to choose a six-year-old girl having tears in her eyes looking for her parents in that devastation caused by earthquake? I think if it, if it would have been a face-to-face -face class, most of you would have selected the third option. The girl, six-year-old girl, messy, all wrecked up you might say the pain in his eyes that are visible looking frantically for the parents this would be the most powerful image that you can introduce the audience with in the first 60 seconds when you're talking about devastation of earthquake instead of showing them buildings collapsed collapsed buildings or instead of showing them the other picture where some people are uh, you know running here and they're frantically and trying to save other people i think this third picture would be able to give a more emotional relationship with the audience and this is what you have to look for in the images when you are trying to pick those images up make sure that you are whatever image you are displaying to the audience it has an emotional relationship with the audience that would break the barrier between you and the audience. And they would fall in love with you and they would like to hear more. Right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the next, the last strategy can be the strategy of introduction. Uh, sorry, realia. Using a realia. Now, what is a realia? Realia is any real object. Now, this realia can be very easily used in your technical subjects, in your engineering subjects. For example, Excuse me, if you have to give a presentation on a tool, on an instrument, um, or you might say on an equipment, what you can do is you can take that equipment directly in the boardroom or in the conference room or to the presenter and you can show them that this is how this thing looks. But of course, this, this cannot be handy every time. So what you can do if you cannot have really any hands, for example, there are some kind of equipment, there are some kind of tools that you cannot carry in your, um, you might say, presentation room. So what you can do is no problem. You can incorporate YouTube slide in your first 60 second introduction. This would give the audience a more clearer picture that what you would be talking about. So if you do not have any realia of the equipment, tool, instrument, if you do not have the uh, equipment, tool, instrument in real time in your hands, utilize YouTube. Take a YouTube video, introduce it to the audience, introduce the audience with that tool, and then start off with your presentation. Sometimes there are some measurements to be taken, right, which are very difficult, which are not easy to be understood. What you can do is, again, show them a YouTube, how these measurements can be easily taken you know through these ideas because of course if you do not have the facility of lab or any other facility what you can do is again youtube can save you in that regard 
and that you too would become a more powerful medium of introduction rather than just telling verbally to the people that we have got this equipment this is how we're going to measure things up this is how we're going to calculate that will become quite boring now, right so you can use youtube video or you can use realia in your hands or you can introduce realia to the audience for showcasing your content okay now this is going to be the last slide uh, and we're not going to move ahead because I want to stop over here before moving to the conclusion part. Or let's see if the time permits, we can move ahead. Then comes the middle part of presentation. Now, always remember, if you are not going to tell the audience how your presentation is going to proceed, you are leaving them in a lurch. You're leaving them in the air. You are not giving them any direction. If you remember, when I started my presentation, I showed you a slide of objectives that objective slide had three had four sub sections that how my presentation is going to proceed now the ideal thing is that after your 60 second introduction or before your 60 second introduction it depends on you and depends on the topic that you have been assigned what you can do is show the audience a slide that this is how i would proceed you can call that slide objective slide. You can you can call that slide introduction slide or better yet. Do not write anything. Do not write introduction objective. Just write the points and bullets and tell the audience that my presentation is going to comprise of these ideas. And please, when you are writing those bullet points, when you're writing those objectives on the screen, make sure they are not more than four or three, three or four points. Because if you're going to tell the audience that you have a lot to talk, again, they would lose interest. And we don't want that. We don't want them to be checking out Facebook when we are delivering presentation, isn't it? Then what, what's the point of presenting if they are involved with something other? So make sure that you have an objective slide or an introduction slide or simple bullet point slide which gives three or four main points that this is the crux of my presentation and I would be moving from step one to step two to step three to step four. Secondly, whenever you are giving details of your presentation in the body part, please make sure whatever statement you are churning out, it has to be backed by an evidence. People nowadays do not believe in high claims or general claims. I think we discussed that in the class uh, earlier too. We talked about being general. We talked about, sorry, being particular when we are conversing with people, when we are communicating with people. Let's not be general. Now, I'll give you an example of being general. For example, instead of saying that electrical engineering has become the new fashion in the new students, instead of saying that, come up with a statistic, come up with a fact that proves that electrical engineering is gaining popularity among the new generation. Or when you say that software engineers would be in demand by the year 2021, this claim would be futile if you do not back it with a reference of, you know, from an article, from a journal, from a book. For example, if you would say Washington Times say, or you can quote any other uh, famous news, a newspaper or journal or article or you can say journal of engineering says that by the year 2021 software engineering would be the most popular engineering then your statement would have more credibility please take this take take a very important notice of that very important note of that because what most of us do we believe in hollow examples we believe in hollow references. No, for God's sake, when you are referring something, when you are giving examples, make sure examples can be of two types, your personal or impersonal. We do not want any evidences for that. But when you are talking about anything apart from examples, you have to give references. Is it is it from Guardian? Is it from Newsweek? Is it from Dawn? Who is the person who actually quoted this? Right? And then share your opinion. This would make you more credible. This would make your statement more strong rather than just saying I have heard. Please never say that I have heard. 
that you know by the year 2021 uh, sorry by the year 2035 computer engineering or ai would be in the fashion please do not say that this is not the way an effective presenter speaks an effective polished speaker speaks with references and then there are a lot of ideas how to illustrate your point of view you can use graphs you can use pie charts you can use bar graphs there are so many other ideas in which you can frame or in which you can give your point of view interestingly so check out on that part we'll be talking about on these small details in the other sessions too right third important part utilize verbal and non-verbal transitions now what is this verbal transition now they, they are very very important by the way verbal and non-verbal transitions why by the way let's start with the definition of the word transition the word transition if you break it it means transit transit means moving from one place to the other changing take care so transition over here means that when you are conversing with people you need to give them a signpost for example in my presentation the first part would be introducing introduction then i would move on to the middle part of the presentation and then after that i would be talking about how to conclude your presentation effectively now these connectors that i used firstly in the third part these connectors that i used they are transitions if you are not going to give the audience hint where your conversation is moving towards they would remain confused and secondly if you are not going to use transitions in your communication or in your presentation people would think that you are a robot or you have wrote memorized the presentation of course we do not give we do not want to give this idea to the audience that we have wrote memorized the presentation because if you are thinking that you know it would be a very good good idea if i wrote memorized the presentation and then i would present then i'm sorry you are missing the natural factor in your presentation right so in order to sound natural in order to sound like another human being out of the audience that is talking to them that is conversing to them you have to use verbal and non verbal transitions now verbal transitions i just told you i'll also forward you a list of transitions with the heading that where you can use those transitions i'll forward you that article too so verbal transitions would be for example using firstly secondly thirdly hence therefore consequently so this is how that is why all these are verbal transitions that makes your speech more human like secondly there are non verbal transitions now non verbal transitions they are possible when you are giving your presentation on camera and people can see you why am i using this word because nowadays it's it's online presentation again but if you are not on camera then non verbal transitions can still be there now what are those non non verbal transitions non verbal transitions are use of your voice use of your body language now always remember your voice plays a very important role when you are presenting to people the way you raise your voice the way you lower your voice the way you generate excitement the way you put pressure you put emphasis on words that plays a very very crucial role for people to understand that yes you are conveying something for the point so if you are not using non verbal transitions and so it has to be a mixture of both verbal and non verbal transitions when you are giving face to face presentation non verbal transitions would be looking at the people smiling at the people please do not make it a very long smile that people would start considering you as a joker or something that you are not that you are constantly smiling but a very you might say mild smile or a 6 second smile 7 second smile that's it not more than that do not constantly gaze a particular section for example a particular girl or a boy that again would be an inappropriate non verbal transition and again a cul culture has to do a lot with non verbal transitions let me tell you not verbal non verbal transition culture has a lot to do with that why am i saying culture why am i incorporating culture if you are giving a presentation to somebody who is living in west there people would never mind you know when you are looking at them 
or when you're looking at a particular female or particular male. People will never mind. But when you are giving a presentation in Pakistan, I'm, I'm especially referring to Pakistan over here. I'm not saying developing countries, but when you're giving a presentation to Pakistan and then in Pakistan, even you've got two chains, urban and rural. If you're giving to rural ones, you have to be more constricted with your personality. You cannot get frank because they would not like it. And when you are giving a presentation to urban culture or in an urban culture, of course, there too, if you would gaze a particular person for a long time, the person would mind that. Right. So make sure you are following cultural appropriateness when you are delivering presentations. Right. And last but not the least, and it's very, very important point, engage the audience with questions or stories. Now, the problem with stories is that most of my trainees tell me that, ma'am, we do not have that much stories to talk about because, of course, we do not have the ideal experience. We do not have that age. We haven't yet faced the world that much that we're going to have so much stories. I agree. You people do not have that bank of stories to talk about. But you can obviously work on it, isn't it? When you are when you are told about a presentation that you have a presentation after six days or seven days, what you can do is after every five or six minutes, you can generate a story. Now, the interesting thing or the captivating thing about stories is that people forget about the content, but they remember about but they remember your story and that that story helps them to remember your points. So that's a sequence. The more stories you would generate, the more they would remember. Oh, yes, they talked about that. For example, I just told you a story. About my child giving a presentation at six years old. Now, I'm sure. Most of you would have remembered that he took me along. To show people that how a Pakistani female looks like. Although I didn't ask you to remember that I didn't force you to remember that. But you would remember that because you would be able to, and if you would remember that you'll be able to link it with all the other parts too that I told you in the presentation. Right? So stories help you in that regard. And if you think you cannot come up with stories, you are not interested in telling those stories or you might think that ma'am, I'm not comfortable by getting so much frank with the with the audience. What you can do is you can come up with questions. Every now and then you have to come up with a question to the audience, otherwise they would doze off. And that goes with face to face interaction too. And when you have your uh, cameras on, even then you have to pose question off and on because otherwise they would be interested in something else. Right? So after every five minutes or after every three minutes, make it a rule that you have to come up with a question. Now, question uh, asking question is easier as compared to telling stories. What you can do is when you think when you just witness in front of you that people are, you know, losing the attention, your presentation is losing the momentum. What you can do is just come up with a very simple question. For example, if you're about to talk about the conclusion. Just ask the audience. OK, fine. Can anybody tell me over here what kind of conclusion would be the best conclusion concluding with a picture or concluding orally? Now, what would happen? This would again alert the audience. Fine. That the presenter has questioned something and now we have to answer it. So after every two or three minutes, do come up with a question and not a very technical one. Keep it very simple one. Just relate it to your upcoming material and question them. Okay, what do you think about it? Right? OK. Any questions up to now or we'll move to the conclusion part that that's the last thing we have got some more slides, but we will not be moving towards them. Let's see how you can conclude your presentation. Now there are two. I think we discussed that in the class too. There are two ways to conclude your presentation open ended and close ended. And I've been teaching to so many students now. I've forgotten that whether I discussed it with you or not, but let's recap in case you know people haven't heard about it. Conclusion is of two types open ended and close ended. Open ended conclusion is one in which you leave the room open for the audience to think of the solution. And a close ended presentation is one in which. You give the solution yourself. And you say okay, this is a solution we have decided and let's work on that. Now close ended conclusions work in your meetings. Now remember meetings are your kind of mini presentations by the way, right? In meetings, the only thing is that you do not have to 
stand up and present but all of you are sitting in your chairs and you are presenting you are contributing so in meetings this close ended approach works but when you are asked to design a presentation exclusively for an uh, you might say for a delegation or for a matter that needs a uh, consensus from everybody there you can leave your conclusion open ended right and you can ask the house fine what's your opinion on that fine sir what's your idea on that and then you can ask everybody else and then you can conclude your presentation but after moving from open ended conclusion then you will move to close ended conclusion right when you're giving a formal presentation but in meetings you can always move to close ended conclusion because everybody is giving up their point of view and you know at a time comes when you can say fine this is what we have concluded then we're going to work towards it right so uh, don't just skip the student part over here what you can do is conclusion is you can give a quick recap right uh, by yourself that whatever you have actually generated in the uh, presentation you can give one take away you can tell the audience that this is one take away message and or this is the summary or this is the capsule summary of my presentation of course don't go into details don't talk about very extensive conclusion just stick to two or three bullet points as it two or three sentences i'm sorry right now there's also one more thing that i would like to add over here when you are presenting to an unknown audience of course everyone has its first timers and when you are presenting to an audience you would be able to analyze whether the audience is a friendly one or whether it's a hostile one friendly audience of course appreciates your efforts they acknowledges they acknowledge your efforts right and they want to be a part of your journey but there there are times when you can see very clearly in the eyes of the audience that they are not at par or they are not agreeing with your point of view now if this happens if you're addressing a hostile audience then you should be giving a summary by yourself but if you are giving a presentation to a friendly audience the people who would like to talk to you more then it's a very good idea to engage them at the end of your presentation and ask them okay fine could somebody please volunteer one thing that my presentation was able to you know change you in or one thing that you learned from my presentation right but please it depends on the kind of audience that you are facing so if it's a non friendly audience please do not get into this because of course if you're going to ask them opinion might be they'll be teasing you might be they'll coming up with some inappropriate questions so it's not a good idea to end your presentation on that uh, distasteful note right so if it's a friendly audience you can ask them to volunteer if it's a non friendly audience give a summary from your own side again it depends on the level of presentation or or the level of people that you are submitting your presentation to for example if they are seniors you cannot ask them sir could you please volunteer what did you learn today you cannot do that but if they are juniors if they are you know uh, if they are working under you you can of course ask them could somebody please tell what did you learn from today's presentation so again the context the environment the situation is important before you jump forward to open ended conclusion or close ended conclusion or before you give the summary by yourself or you ask people to summarize then forget this uh, what you can do is and nowadays of course everyone is in love with oral quizzes or online quizzes so if you want your audience to be more interested what you can do is you can develop an online quiz for them there are thousands of quizzes available thousands of questionnaires available on the internet you can ask them to solve one and when they would see the result they would be very excited fine so i i you know i did it like this i reached this mark or i i scored 10 on 10 you know something like that or you can have a question answer session at the end so these are the three options that you can use when you are concluding your presentation so i would like to end my presentation over here and before i wind up this session i would request all of you to please turn on your mics please turn on your mics everybody we still have got 6 7 minutes and i want you people to let me know if you have got any questions so unfortunately my raising your hand is not working so i request anybody who has any questions 